Hey, this is Troy from Planet 76. We've got some really good Sixers focused content coming your way today. Make sure you subscribe to the pod so you can be in the know when we release new content. Enjoy the show. What is up, Sixers fans? We are back with another episode of Planet 76, episode 63 of the pod. Uh, my name's Troy. I've got Michael here with me as well, and uh, we're recording Sunday, August 28th, um, and we've got some fun stuff to get into, so we're, we're going to be doing what we've done the last couple episodes, doing some player profiles um, on current Sixers players, just doing a deep dive into, into those guys and what they bring to the team, what they've brought to the team in the past maybe, and, and what we look for this year. So t- today's episode is going to be talking about Shake Milton and Furkan Korkmaz and then get into a, a little fun segment uh, toward the end of the episode. So uh, that's what we've got on tap for episode 63. Hope that you uh, enjoy. Again, as always, hit that subscribe button, that like button, that follow button, wherever it is. Uh, that helps us out and that will help you uh, keep up to date on everything Planet 76 as we inch closer to the season. So, uh, Michael, what's going on? Inching ever so closer <laughs> to the NBA season. I'm using my microphone like this today because I'm trying to fix the audio quality. So we're experimenting. It's episode 63. I think we've earned that right. So we're gonna we're going to exercise it. And yeah, episode 63 of the podcast. Make sure you guys subscribe as well. We're gonna like Troy said. We're gonna keep continuing with our player profile series here on Planet 76. We got Shake. We got Ferk coming up next, and. We're coming close to the end of the lineup, so we have some big names coming up, and uh, obviously we're going to be doing those next few weeks. So, right. like, like we both said, I'm about to take these glasses off. They're getting on my nerves. Um, <laughs> like we both said, we're going to start with Shake. We're going to start with Ferk. Troy, since you made the outline, I will let you go first. I can't see, actually. I need my glasses. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, So, yeah, (laughs) some more Sixers profiles on these players. And what's interesting about the two that we've got today are, you know, they've been in a Sixers uniform for quite some time. They've been in a Sixers uniform for their Mm -hmm. entire careers in the NBA, which is interesting. So, uh, Shake Milton will start there. I know he's a guy that you are certainly a big fan of. Um, The first, first thing I'll say with Shake uh, before we get into some stats and, you know, again, what we what our expectations are for the future. First thing I'll say about him is um, obviously this year due to some injuries, due to some, you know, just mm-hmm. lack of playing time or inconsistency, you know, in and out of the lineup. Um, Shake was shaky, pun very much intended. Um, but he, he did have some uh, moments. He, 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 he certainly he certainly shined at times. <laughs> And, um, you know, he's just a guy that, you know, we're big fans of. And, you know, I'm excited that he's still in a Sixers uniform. He's going to be um, in a in maybe a little bit of a different role as the Sixers have brought in a guy like the Anthony Melton. And so seeing how that's going to affect Shake Milton should, should be interesting. And we'll talk about that in a moment. But, um, you know, I'm excited just for the potential of a healthy season for Shake Milton where he's going to be, you know, available. How much playing time he'll get, we'll see. Um, but a guy that's that we hope is going to be available all 82 games and uh, is is going to shine when he gets a chance. So um, that's what I'll say. Just as a little intro on Shake. What about you? Yeah, I think I think Shake has really been a guy that's you know I don't want to say too consistent um, because it took him a while to actually get going. Last year was actually his best. Last year was his career high in scoring career high in basically everything steals assists rebounds uh, almost mm-hmm. free throw percentage free throw attempts for sure but like Troy mentioned this year you could kind of say it was a down year for Shake because he was injured for a big chunk of the season and he only really started to get some burn in the playoffs which is not the best time to get your guys minutes when they haven't played all season basically so you're going to see some decreases with Shake and his stats, especially his overall performance as well. Eight points per game this year. Um, it's higher free throw percentage, but almost two times less. Wait, two? What am I trying to say? He, t- <laughs> he took 2.8 free throws 
last year per game, and this year he's only taken 1.3. Basically everything is down from last year, which again was basically his career year. Three-point makes, three-point attempts, three-point percentage, uh, two-point makes, two-point attempts, two-point percentage. Everything was down this year. His minutes, he played 55 games. This wasn't Shake's year. However, what I will say and, and, and what I've been saying on my page is that Shake is still the guy. He's still a quality NBA player. He's still someone who I think the Sixers can rely on when necessary. Obviously, they're not really going to have to as much because of the Milton trade. I'm sorry, the Melton trade because of the Tucker signing, <laughs> because of the House signing. But mm-hmm. he's still a guy that I think can give you lots of production off the bench, especially as a scorer off the bench, because a big theme on this podcast is that you can never have too much scoring. And the Sixers are one of those teams that, no matter who else they get, no matter who's on the roster, they can't have too much scoring. Shake brings you a ton of scoring ability. He, he adds layers to the Sixers. Right. He's quite the seasoned scorer, if you will, himself. He's able to do a lot of things. He he can shoot the three ball, good mid-range shooter, good slasher, pretty good finisher, good free throw shooter. He brings a lot to you as a scoring option. And I'm very interested to see, one, his role, but also if he's able to stay healthy because him staying healthy, obviously, is going to have a lot to do with his role and what he's going to be for this team. And like Troy mentioned, he's been with the Sixers his entire career. Drafted by the Sixers in 2018. Yep, that's yeah. right. Um, four years he's been with the Sixers. This is going to be his fifth year. And I believe he's a free agent yeah. next year. It could be wrong because he had a pretty team-friendly deal up until now, which, again, is basically this season. So I'm assuming he's a free agent, and he's probably going to maybe want more money, I'm guessing. This is going to be a big year for that question. Yeah, and we'll find that out obviously when the season is end is over. But I still am I still am a huge fan of Shake. I have been, I will be. I have his jersey. I can't just, I can't just you know, forget that he exists like a lot of people do. Um, I I just am a big fan, and I really think he can still bring a lot to this team, and I think he will. I truly think he will. Hmm. Yeah, I mean he's he's a capable player. You know, you said it best. I mean he yeah. he's a very good NBA player, and you know it's cool to see him gearing up for another season uh, with our team. You know, he's a guy that you want on your team, and so it's really really exciting that he's he's continuing to be in a Sixers uniform. You know, you think about it. I mean, you touched on it too, but you know this the year before this past season, you know he averaged what thirteen points a game. Um, you know, and especially yeah, early in the high. season, early in the season, it was a talk of like Shake Milton, like rookie of the year. Now that that simmered down quite a bit toward the end of the season, but like he was there, like he was, he had such a good season. Um, and part of that was due to things that were lacking this last season. Um, you know, he was he was injured this previous season. Um, he you know, and that caused some you know playing time. That caused a question of where he fits into the rotation. Um, whereas the year before it wasn't that, and we saw Shake do very, very well. Um, now again, the bench looks different, the rotation looks different, the starting lineup looks different. Um, so where Shake's going to fit into all that, we shall see. Um, and again, because of DeAnthony Melton coming in, because they're both kind of combo guards, um, you know, I hope they make each other better. You know, I hope the Milton Melton backcourt is going to be very uh, fruitful for the Sixers this coming season. So, um, yeah, I'm excited to see him play. I, I do think that give you know, if he can stay healthy, you know, I, I, I think he's a guy that's going to play, you know, um, unlike some guys we've talked about in previous episodes, but I think he's a guy that's going to see action. Um, I think he and DeAnthony Melton are those two guys off the bench at guard. And, um, that's the most confident I felt in Sixers guards off the bench, um, you know, in a season, entering into a season than I've ever felt. So, uh, cause those two guys are certainly more than capable. So very exciting to see what Shake's going to do. Uh, anything else with Shake? Well, the one thing I will say about Shake, even think about to the playoffs, um, you know, in the, in the last series against Miami, like he tried his best to keep the Sixers in that game. Um, so if you're, you know, 
casual Sixers fans who only watch in the playoffs or <laughs> or if you you know are listening and you're just an NBA fan and you know you don't know too much about the Sixers that wasn't necessarily what I would say a fluke from Shake Milton in his performance uh, in the playoffs this past season he's he's more than capable of doing and getting buckets in um, spurts like that so uh, yeah what else about Shake before we move on to Mr. Korkmaz I think that's pretty much it, to be honest with you. I mean, like, we I think we pretty much covered most of it. I'm still a firm believer in Shake's abilities. I'm still a firm believer in what he can bring to the Sixers team. And he still is only 25. So, like, he's been with the Sixers his whole career, but he was drafted at 21. So, that's, that's mm-hmm. some player's whole career in itself. Like, some guys only ever get four or five, six years in the league. So... I'm not saying Sheik's going to be one of those guys, but he's still young enough to the point where he can get those opportunities to continue again, whether it's with the Sixers, whether it's with whoever else. Yeah. Right. So let me ask you this, because I just thought of this. So, you know, we know that this is a much improved bench. We know it's a... a team we're, we're pretty confident about. I mean, this is a James Harden starting his first full season with the Sixers. Um, the roster seems to be set um, for the most part. And do you think that, now again, maybe it's a season where he's going to have to earn his minutes because of that bench depth, but do you think this roster that the Sixers have, have made, do you think that helps or hurts Shake Milton for this upcoming season? in term, Not in terms of how many minutes he's going to get, but just how he's going to look in, in, in whatever role that it's going to be because it might be a little different. Do you think it helps him or hurts him? I think I think it helps him because there's going to be a lot less pressure on him to succeed quickly because, mm-hmm. you know, if he's still – ideally he's not, but if he is still recovering from an injury or anything of that sort – the hope is that with the guys that the Sixers now have on the roster, it's going to take some pressure off of him, and he can kind of play at his own pace more, if you will, because the guys that the Sixers signed and traded for are guys I think are a little more accustomed to really ramping it up when the time is necessary. Mm -hmm. not saying Shake isn't. It's just that he hasn't been relied on like these guys have, like Tucker has, like Melton has, as a key bench piece and again partially because huge chunk of his career last year he was injured so you can't really really rely on that plus he didn't really start coming to his own until maybe his third season and at that point it's only been two years three years so he hasn't been he hasn't been thrown in if you will like those guys have and and i think that's a good thing for him because i don't i don't think that there needs to be pressure on a guy like that. He's a guy that needs rhythm. He needs touches to to really produce at a high level. We've seen that. So I, I think that statement says a lot in itself. But I think it's going to help him a lot is, mm-hmm. is what I'll say for sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you bring in key pieces that are that are used to, you know, this, you know, bench role that they've played for, you know, X amount of years. I think it can help a guy like Shake and – I, I yeah. do. I'm, that's probably one of the biggest things I'm looking forward to this season is Milton Melton, uh, and to see how they can coexist. You know, that's as right, much yeah. as they'll be on the floor together, I don't know. You know, because a lot of times one of them will be with Harden, one of them will be with Tyrese, and uh, but sometimes they'll be together. And you know, even who gets what minutes and what scenarios do you put who in? And um, I I can see it working really well because again, I think now outside of I guess arguably Tyrese Maxey when he was coming off the bench. I mean this. This is the best backcourt mate that Shake Milton has had off the bench, right? In D'Anthony Melton. I don't think there's any arguing that. So, we shall see. All right, Furkan Korkmaz, if you've got his stuff pulled up, um, why don't you tell me a little bit about Furkan and you know, obviously another guy who's been with the Sixers a while, uh, his whole career in the NBA, and... Um, yeah, so let's do a dive on, on Furkan and where he's been in the league and what we look for him to do this year. So, 
Furcon Corkmaz. I also have his jersey. And there's a poster <laughs> of him behind me. Um, been with the Sixers five years, his whole career. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24 this season. Career high in scoring was in 2020. Nearly 10 per points per game. Basically career highs and everything. Well, actually, not really. Only thing he really was career high was in points in three-point percentage, and he tied for the most three-point attempts per game with 4.9, went on to shoot 4.9 again the season after, but he also made more threes the season prior when he shot 40%. Now, next the season after that, again, is pretty similar, nine points per game, 37% on less makes, same amount of attempts, and, yeah, minutes. I mean, he's been playing the same amount of minutes since 2020. Now, this past season, bit of a regression year for Ferk. Not regression in the mm-hmm. sense that he's getting worse, just a down year, if you will. Nearly eight points right. per game. Career high in assists, though, which is interesting. Career high in rebounds. Career high in free throw percentage. Career high in two-point percentage as well. And an abysmal 29% from three. Now, he still, he still took four attempts per game. He just missed more than he ever did in his career. He I shot what from three? He, an abysmal 29% from three. 29? You know, 29. 28.9. I'm sorry, .289 is, is the number. 28.9? Wow. On four really? attempts, he just, he just only made 1.1 threes per game, which is horrible. Career low in field goal percentage aside from his rookie season. Well, he, he did shoot 39% from the field on seven attempts. So that's not really that bad, honestly. But 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 he his scoring clearly was not as good. His three-point shooting was clearly not as good. The two main reasons he's on the, he's on the team. So what I will yeah. say is that yeah. I still think I still <laughs> think Fur can be a productive NBA player. I still think Fur can be good for this team. I don't know if he's going to get minutes anymore, and a lot of people will rejoice at that. Because they don't, I mean, they don't like Furcon. But a lot of people haven't liked Furcon since, since even right. when he had a great, even when he was great in 2020, people didn't like him. Whatever. It doesn't matter. But what matters is that one. I think yeah. he's still a productive NBA player. I still think he can be a productive NBA player for the Sixers. He's probably not going to get a lot of playing time. Again, similar reasons as to why Shake may see a decrease in playing time. Similar reasons as to why Matisse Thibel might see a decrease in playing time. Because the Sixers have <laughs> really, really solid bench depth. And I, 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 I'm I, not going to say Ferk deserves it over any of those guys because we can see and we can tell that they're much more proven right. and they also, I feel like, are going to be able to contribute way more than he's going to. Plus, I think he'll fall into the same category with Shake. I think taking some of that pressure off a guy like Ferk to really – succeed as a as a seventh man off the bench eighth man off the bench it's going to take a lot of pressure off him now he has done it he has succeeded in that role but it was only for like you know basically one and a half seasons not quite two seasons last year Mm -hmm. the year before his career high in points here like he was probably I, i really forget the numbers but he was probably like an eighth man off the bench ninth man off the bench the pressure wasn't on him to be right. great necessarily. This year it was bench was right. you know kind of iffy. They had Nor- Niang. I almost said, what did I almost say just there? I don't even know. Niang, Thibault, Milton, and Drummond. Uh, obviously, wait, did Seth Curry start? Seth Curry did start. Yeah, right. I was gonna say in the guard department. I should say. Um, you know, Sixers were, were, were not too heavy on guards this past right. year. I mean, off the bench, again, Milton and Theibel and Korkmaz. There's not a lot of guys to take the, the pressure off of him scoring-wise. But now they have Mil- – now they have – I almost have Milton again when I meant to refer to Melton. <laughs> Melton, Get they have. That. House, they have. Yeah, right. No, I know. Um, and, like, even Milton. You know, the, the, everyone kind of gets bumped down, but – not in a bad way because I don't think it's going to be – I don't think it's um, like a condescending thing, if that's the right word. I'm not sure. 
but it's it's going to be good. It's going to be good, and I th- I still think Ferk is good. I still think Ferk is a good NBA player, quality NBA player. If he can get that three point percentage back up, I don't know what I don't know what's going on. I don't know what was going on there. There's literally yeah, no reason bad. to be that bad of a three point shooter, especially when you put up thirty three percent, forty percent, thirty eight percent on very solid volume. There's no really yeah. no excuse to shoot twenty nine percent from three on on similar attempts. Like, that's just horrible. That's just really bad. So I hope he can recover from that because again, like we like I talked about a couple minutes ago, that's where most of his value comes from. He's a spot up three point shooter. He needs to make his three point shots, or his value seriously decreases and he becomes much less valuable than he would be. And even his even his overall right. scoring. I mean, his overall scoring took a drop, like we mentioned too. That needs to improve and recover quite a bit because again, he's a scoring. Option. He's nothing more. Well, okay, I don't want to say he's nothing more than that, but he's not much more than that. That's what he is. That's what he should be doing. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm done now. <laughs> <laughs> um, question though. So okay. two guys that have, you know, they shake and fur on. They've seen their roles change. They've seen. You know, they've seen what it's like in an NBA journey to have some highs and lows, and um, yeah. both of them ex- experiencing some lows this past season. And and again, I knew Furkan's three point percentage was lower. I didn't re- quite realize it was that low. I don't know why. I, I figured low thirties. Horrendous. Yeah, but when, once you're in the twenties, it's a little it's a little concerning. Just saying. But I will say. So my question, especially is, when you're a guy who has shot forty percent. Right. Right. Like what the heck? So my question is. Do you agree with me in that, you know, in this in this new you know new bolstered bench that there's more pressure on Furcon than there is on Shake in order like in terms of like I need to perform or else like my spot is gone like there's a little more leeway with Shake in his position than there is in Furcon like if he comes out and let's say he plays in 15 of the first 20 games and his shooting percentage is still down his defense still sucks like. He's not playing anymore, right? I mean, how you know he's got a shorter leash than Shake Milton does. Here's what I will say: my answer is that I 100% agree with you, but I'll explain why. So, when you have a guy like Ferk who has a poor season, really, you know what? Poor might be an understatement. I like Furkan. Like I said again, I have his poster behind me. I have his jersey, but you can't play that poorly. And then expect to just have your spot on the roster, right? One hundred percent guaranteed. Like if you're a guy like Niang, you have a roster spot for sure. Like we talked about last episode. Make sure you guys go watch that. But with Ferk, he didn't play nearly as well as Niang, so he can't. He's not a guy that you can just expect to get the roster spot right back. Plus, adding in the fact that the Sixers have more guys now, which they didn't have last season. Yeah. So there is a lot more pressure on Furcon, yeah. like I said, I 100% agree with you, to succeed, not only succeed, but succeed enough to the point where you're able to maintain your status on the roster with the team, because he's still under contract, you know, I don't see them trading him, right. it's just that, is he going to be a third stringer? That's, that's right. the question, is he going to be a guy who the Sixers go to? When they are up 20 or down by 80, which happens a lot for the Sixers. <laughs> That's the question, and he has the answer. Only only Farrakhan yeah. has the answer. Nobody else. Yeah, because again, me, it's, not anybody else. Yeah, even like we've talked about in previous episodes, it's not like you know every single guy that we're talking about, it's not like they're never going to see the floor. But right. you know, early season, Furcon is going to be very important because if he sucks, mm-hmm. you know, the Sixers have forwards that they've just gotten. I mean, think about it. P.J. Tucker's in here. Um, Daniel House is in here. We brought in DeAnthony Melton, who's a guard, but like Danny Green is gone, and so there, there's, there's. I think the seat is hotter for Furkan Korkmaz one because yeah, there's I other, agree. there's more options behind him. At guard, I mean, we're really hoping Milton's going to be, you know, the answer. Or what are we going to do? You know what I mean? I, I mean, they can go to. Yeah. You know, playing Melton at the one and just going a little bigger with some, uh, you know, oversized guys at two, three, four. But like, 
I mean, Milton's kind of the guy, and I, I think there's less pressure on him coming into this season. Um, yeah, 29% for Con Korkmaz. We shall see what it's happens. It's literally awful. Literally. Like, that's, just, that's just horrible. That's horrible. That's horrible. For And, and you said it best, for a guy who – he, he's making his money because he can he can shoot the basketball. Yeah. Um. What a shame. What a shame. But like you said, like we both said it, a guy who has shot forty percent from three on solid volume before. He's yeah. done it before. So the conclusion you can come to is that he can do it again. And that's why, like you just said, great point. That's. Probably the main reason, if not <laughs> yeah. one of the main reasons, the Sixers gave him $15 million. It's not his defense. No. That's for <laughs> sure. That's a top. That's, that's like. Not his defense. That's another 45 minute episode that we could spend. Um, yeah. But we're not going to do that. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right. That's our player profiles on Shake Milton and Furkan Korkmaz. And uh, again, we've got some more coming your way in future episodes. We are going to cap off this episode real quick with a little bit of cool. a segment we've done in the past, a little bit of over. Over under. under. So I've got four over Love under this. topics for Michael, and he's going to answer uh, with a brief explanation. Uh, this isn't oh. rapid fire. We'll get, let him let him let him chat a little bit about his answers for these. So uh, first one, uh, I saw an article. I think we've all seen it. Maybe Bleacher Report or someone. You know, late July said that the over under mark for the Sixers win total this season is fifty and a half games uh, in the W column for the Sixers. So are you going over or under that mark? Who made up that? <laughs> How does these work? Because either they know something we don't, or they are blatantly wrong. Okay. And I think they're wrong. Okay. So I'm going to go with way over 50.5 way over. wins. That's way over, man. That's I feel like that's kind of <laughs> crazy if you say the Sixers are only going to win 50 games. Okay. <laughs> like they won 53, and they didn't even have Harden for – 80% right. of the season, 90% of this, 95% of the season. Right? What? What? What did you say? They didn't have Harden I for said, what? I said they didn't have Harden for nearly 95% of the season. Well, 75% of the season. But yeah. Well, he only played, he only played in March though. He played 21 games. What? Yep. 21 oh. regular season games, and well, he a- he averaged 21 points per that's... game. Oh, you're right. But anyway. 25%. That okay, so you're 20%. saying way over. You're saying yeah. whoever made that is dumb. Thankfully, it wasn't me. I got that Well, I won't call them dumb. Um, let, me, but... let me adjust it then. Over okay. under 56 and a half games. That's a little tighter, obviously. I, I would like to see them win more than that. Okay. But I'm going to go with the under. Okay, so you're thinking 54, 55 wins. Yeah. Okay. All right, next one. Uh, Matisse Thibel. So he's an interesting guy. You know, we Dude. talked about him on episode 62. Um, you know, he was he was a guy who was around league average for th- you know from three a couple years ago. Uh, this past season dipped to maybe around Furkan Korkmaz territory, around 30. Um, but he's not ex- he's expected <laughs> to be a, you know less of a shooter than Furkan. But anyway. <laughs> League average is around 35 or so. Matisse Thibel over or under 33.3% from three this season. We'd love to see the over, but will we? We would love to see the over, but will we? That's a great question. I don't know the answer. I'm just going to say under. (laughs) (laughs) I I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. That's That's one question you'll you'll ask me. Of many, and I won't know what to say. I'm just gonna say, like, I'm just gonna say under. Okay. I don't want to ramble. Under, under, under. It is for Matisse. Hopefully not. Hopefully you're very wrong, because yeah, if you are wrong, wrong, that's gonna mean good things for the Sixers. I'm just gonna say, like, if he's yeah. if he's league average, maybe 35, 36 um, percent, yeah. and you know, and continues to establish himself a little bit, just a little bit improvement on offense. I know we talked about it last week, but if he does, it it could mean good things. All right, two more. Shake Milton uh, in a new role with a new backcourt mate off the bench in Anthony Milton. So Shake around again around 13 points a game two years ago. Last season around nine, I believe. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna call an even 10.0 double digits for Shake Milton over or under. I need it. 
Over. <laughs> I need it, man. It would be nice. Over 10 points per game for Shake. I'm calling it. All right. Does he average Redemption. more or less than DeAnthony Melton off the bench? Uh, he does average less. Okay. So DeAnthony Melton will be closer to the teens maybe? Yes. All right. I just looked into my I just looked into my crystal ball. I can see. Yeah. So okay. Good. Deal. Uh, so that was a bonus one. Now the last one. So James Harden. We just touched on. It. He played 21 games for the Sixers in the regular season last year. He averaged an even 21.0 points per game in those 21 wow. games. Um, it's crazy. Like to think he was a little injured and you know different things. And you know you see him. He just celebrated his birthday. Shout out to him. But you see him in the off season putting some work in and. Um, Man, I hope he's going to come back just ready to hoop, man, and uh, excited to play basketball in a city where he wasn't in Brooklyn and excited to be here in Philly and um, to team up with Joel. And, again, for a full season, full off-season work for him. So, with all that said, we're going to we're gonna move him up a little bit. So, over or under, I had a tough time putting this somewhere because he's a guy that's averaged literally 35 <laughs> points a game in a season. Uh, but over or under 23.5 points per game for James Harden during the regular season. I'm going to say... Crystal ball. Over! Over! 25 per game for Harden. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, but actually, though, I, yes. Over. That's my answer. Yeah. I'm not looking back. Another one you'd I'm love to back. see. Um, yeah. Okay. That's it for over under James Harden. We're saying Woo! over twenty three and a half per game this season. So uh, we would love to see that. Love to see him full health again. A full full season for the Sixers for James Harden, and that's going to be awesome as well with the best bench we've had. Let's go, man! In I'm history, ready. season needs to start today. Yes. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so next episode will be recorded in. A week or so, but that's going to be during the month of September. Um, yes, so we are moving closer. right along, inching along, as we said, to open up. But again, this is Planet 76. This is our 63rd episode. So uh, if you're brand new, keep plugging along with us. Man, we've got good content coming your way for the rest of the off season. Doing some more of these player profiles, and then uh, pretty soon we'll be gearing up for the 2022-23 NBA season, and uh, we hope that you will join us for that as well. All right, Michael, anything else you want to say to the people? Nope. That's it. That's it. He, he, he did a, he's done enough crystal ball work for the day, <laughs> uh, so he's done. He's gone to the clear. It's, right, it's right here sitting next to me. I can't show you or else yeah. it will ruin everything. Right. So it, it's exhausting just, work. Just, just just believe me. Just believe just, him. Source, just trust me, bro. <laughs> All right. We will see you next time on Planet 76. Peace. Are you on Instagram? Why don't you go give us a follow at Planet 76 Podcast so you can be in the know when we drop new episodes. Thanks for listening to this one, and we'll see you next time.